Hello everyone, Richard here. Today I want to talk a little bit about the OpenSLA project that I've been working on and uh, it's now a Google group as well so I invite anyone to come and do a little bit more research work on UV resin 3D printing basically. So first of all I just wanted to go over some of the basics of UV resin printing and one of the most important things is the, the safety aspect so very quickly and don't, don't ignore this bit uh, when you're handling resins, be really, really, really careful. They are come in all different types of formulations and most of the time we don't know what's in there. Hopefully, we'll find out from some manufacturers and they'll be a little bit more open about their resin formulations and actually what we're um, getting ourselves into. So there's a lot of really good ones on the market and there's a lot of ones that really we just haven't got the faintest idea of what's in them. There's some resins recently that have come onto the market that are packaged like this. And they do work, they're a bit smelly, so it's interesting to you know to figure out what, what's in them, but they're very, very, very cheap. They're actually cheaper now than FDM filament. So it's gonna be really interesting to see whether these resins um, work well enough for people and can actually give us the sort of 3D printing that we want with the uh, uh, SLA resin printing that we're, that we're starting to get used to. So the other side of things is, that's handling resins, make sure you get some rubber gloves and wear at least safety glasses when you're handling resins and using it and preferably in an open environment as well it's not a great idea they do they do smell a bit and it's not a great idea to have them in a closed environment even when you're just uh, just storing them so the other side of things is UV and ultraviolet light is what we're going to be using to cure the resins and all of these resins cure with ultraviolet light from around 365 nanometers up to about 410 nanometers. Traditionally they we've used or has been used the uh, normal DLP projectors and they're okay they have a wide spectrum of light that uh, that can transmit some UV but you've actually got to use a hell of a lot of, uh, of light, so a 180 watt bulb, just to get a small amount of UV to come through and cure the resin. So the point of the Open SLA project is to focus more on pure UV light by using LEDs, uh, because LEDs are becoming a lot cheaper and readily available now, and we can actually use them to compact, uh, to make the systems more compact, and then make uh, 3D resin printers that can use ultraviolet light directly uh, and, and have a lot, lot, lot lower energy uh, usage. So when you're using ultraviolet light, that's the other thing you really need to do is be really careful. I got myself some of these uh, goggles and I'd really recommend them. They're absolutely fantastic. Made in the USA, they're only about $5. I got them off eBay and they block 99% of UVA and UVB light, which is exactly what you want. Uh, you don't don't just uh, use normal safety goggles, polycarbonate safety goggles, or even be tempted necessarily to use sunglasses. You, you can just about get away with it. They do block a reasonable amount of light as long as they're genuine sunglasses and not fake ones. Um, so that brings me on to another point about how to, uh, how to test a few things. Because when you're experimenting with UV LEDs and uh, experimenting with sort of setting up things that you might use to project images to form 3D models, it's quite nice to be able to have something you can actually experiment a little bit with. And what I found works really well is filament that uh, reacts to UV light. So I've got hold of, been using this for some time, but uh, I've got hold of a few different uh, FDM filaments. And with that, you can actually print out some test disks and different things that you can use to test uh, the UV reaction to, to uh, uh, through different surfaces and this is the sort of thing that we're trying to to um, understand is how much light we can actually project through different types of projection systems to get a decent uh, high quality image that we can turn into a 3D model. So the other thing to do is get hold of a few little torches, UV torches, they're very handy. You can pick those up on, on eBay or, or Amazon for not a lot of money and um, they work really well. So I've got two here. This is this one's at 365 nanometers, and this one's at 380 nanometers. The further higher up you go, up to about 410, they look a little bit more purple. So the light's a little bit more purpley. Down a bit lower, it's it's a little bit more uh, bluer, but it's also usually a bit 
duller actually even for the higher wattage rating you usually get a, a duller light but that's because it's a much lower lower bandwidth frequency but it is actually very very intense so again you make sure you're using your goggles uh, and uh, protecting your eyes and that sort of thing so we just quickly show you what we can do with the with the LEDs and they're quite good because they can actually change and react very very quickly and this one's the same this one will react probably a little stronger and a little bit deeper this is a higher intensity of, of light these are only about um, three watts I think that actually there's a three watt and I think that's a that's a one watt so uh, they're quite good for just testing out things so what you can do with that is print out some test pieces like so and you can use these in your in your various uh, experiments to see how much UV light you can pass through different different surfaces and uh, again if we just quickly show you an example of a normal polycarbonate um, uh, goggle that has got no UV protection at all as soon as you shine light through that it goes through and you can see but if we use our if we use our goggles we can shine as much UV light as we like into that and that's never going to show up on the other side because it blocks almost all of the UV light going through. So the other thing to, that you can use these discs for is to experiment how much, how much light you can pass through and how, mu how much energy you need because the one good thing about UV LEDs is that we can vary their, their intensity by PWM so we can actually control if we've got a 10 watt or even a 20 or 30 watt LED we can control that down when we need to for finer um, details or, or for slower printing to a much lower level um, and that's really handy to be able to actually control the amount of uh, energy that you can dump into your resin at any one time before we could only really do it with a, just allowing a time so you just one or two seconds of exposure and then you'd t you would shut the lights off and then move to the next layer now we've actually can actually do a little bit more sophistication on that so some things that uh, obviously let UV light pass through obviously glass glass is uh, a lot of people think that glass doesn't that blocks UV light most glass actually allows UV light to go through and this UV light that we're interested in the best type of glass is borosilicate which is a um, a very a special type of glass uh, often called pyrex uh, but borosilicate glass allows uh, all, almost all UV light or a decent amount of UV light to go through it so if we put our little, little LED on there we can see that we actually get patterns right the way through the glass onto the other side onto the test disc and the good thing again about that is if you can you these are one and a half millimeters thick so if we put three of these together and we can put that all the way through one two three you can actually start seeing how much intensity we get through with the different different amounts of uh, energy that we put in okay so so that's that side of things. You can actually get really big um, UV UV lamps as well. And this one is is a 20 watt lamp. It's used for curing glues. Uh, again, very cheap off of off of eBay or Amazon. And these are quite nice to use for experimentation and even for producing an entire printer with. So uh, I'm going to put my glass on this because this one is actually quite quite an intense one. So we'll put this on, and I'll show you what happens. When we put, let's put two of these on and just turn this one on. So just a few seconds and we've pretty much gone pretty dark on, on those, both of those two. So that's quite an intense amount of, of, of UV light there. The other thing you can do is get just the LEDs themselves and then you'll have to cool them You've got little drivers as well that tend that you have to use to drive a, a UV a UV LED. You can mount them in different configurations, and these ones these are 10 watt uh, 10 watt lamps. One thing I found really useful is keeping hold of things like this, which is a this is a, a thermo uh, a heat pipe from uh, an old Pentium 4 uh, computer. So I've taken a lot of these sort of things apart over time over the years and kept these type of systems. These are really great because you can mount your LEDs onto here and the heat goes through these heat pipes and you can actually cool so you can keep all the heat away from the projection systems, the delicate systems that you might be using 
where I'm looking at uh, liquid crystal and silicon and various other liquid crystal and other DLP type projection uh, devices which don't like to get hot so anything you can do to keep the heat away uh, because they do dissipate quite, quite a reasonable amount of heat and you do need to try and manage that. So some other things we might need as well uh, on the journey to create these uh, ultraviolet uh, DL DLP or ultraviolet based uh, resin printers. A uh, little shield to control usually just your z-axis because you're just usually moving up and down. AX, Y-axis is obviously handled by, by the projection system and maybe just a little Arduino board that we can just control our, um, our z-axis to move up and down as fine as we possibly can. One of the quick note is that you can, it's quite easy to get sold fake LEDs, fake UV LEDs and it's a bit unfortunate but again having a way of testing them and I can definitely recommend again using this is really useful because I've bought a couple of uh, torches and LEDs off of eBay sellers and they've actually just come as basically white LEDs with a, with a film over the top to make them look like they, they're ultraviolet but they're not and they don't work and they don't give out any ultraviolet at all so if you can just as soon as you get your LED or your torch test it quickly then at least you know you haven't been sold uh, a fake which is uh, unfortunately just uh, happening around the world but uh, but so electronic fake electronic com components are a bit of a bit of a pain really but at least you can test them that way so I'm going to be experimenting a lot more and building up some systems I've built up some basic 3D printing uh, resin based uh, printers at the moment to experiment and test different technologies liquid crystal and silicon and types of LEDs uh, to give us the best best type of exposure in these sort of systems. Uh, I really encourage you to join the Google group uh, OpenSLA open and really it's only going to work if everyone gets involved and feeds back what they want and actually what they are doing in, in, involved in the project. So uh, try and get involved, be very safe with the resins and the UV light and uh, let's try and make some interesting UV SLA printers. So until next time, thanks ever so much, thanks for watching. See you next time.